I'm really excited to tell you about the supplement that totally changed my life around. And the blood tests that the doctors have probably done that will give you a clue if it can help you as well. Enjoy the video. So if you've just watched our video on Elliot's story, where we describe what living with extremely severe ME CFS is like, then you're definitely going to want to know what changed Elliot's life around and the test that the CFS professors and specialists completely ignored that showed without any doubt whatsoever what Elliot's issue with energy was. In this video, we're going to discuss our own experience and we're going to give you some information that you might find useful for your own general education. I think the best thing to do is if I read out the email that I sent to our GPs, because that is a really good record of exactly what was happening at that moment in time. And you'll discover what Elliot's magic potion was that helped him to heal. So this is what I emailed our doctors in October, 2021 after Elliot had been four years in his chronic fatigue bed of torture. I just wanted to share some really positive news about how his mental and physical energy has improved over the past month. It's just amazing. He is now able to clean his own teeth and he can hold a conversation for 15 minutes or so. He's even watched an hour long film spread over the whole day in small chunks, which is just wonderful after three and a half years of not being able to tolerate any noise or mental stimulation. So we're slowly working on his muscles and these are getting stronger. He still has a huge mountain of recovery to climb. We're still spoon feeding him and he is still 100% bedridden. But I'm really hopeful that his body is recovering now and his strength is definitely starting to return. If you're interested in the reason for his amazing improvement in his energy, it is supplementing him with creatine. I'm sure you're aware that creatine is present in much living tissue and it's involved in the supply of energy for muscular contraction. It's the precursor to creatinine, which has been measured in his blood tests 10 times since he became ill. And as you can see from his test results, it has been abnormal well under the normal range, that is until this summer. Since February this year, I've been giving him three or four grams of creatine monohydrate, but when I increased it to five or six grams in August, the changes to his mental and physical energy levels just became amazing. My email carries on that unfortunately, the increase in his energy has also considerably increased his anxiety. Now, if you've watched my video on Dr. Greg's R&B protocol, then you will know the reason why this happened. I'm just going off the point a bit. But the reason the anxiety increased as his methylation increased is because many of our brain chemicals are dependent on the methylation reaction. And so when you start to improve your methylation, then it is a common side effect that you might get this increased anxiety and depression. So please do be aware of this if you decide to start supplementing with creatine. Anyway, going back to my email, one of the doctors was really helpful and has provided information and techniques which really did help Elliot regulate his fight or flight. It is incredibly frustrating and disappointing that he has seen at least five consultants who specialize in MECFS, including Professor not going to mention any names, and none of them had any idea of the significance of Elliot's very low creatinine levels. And this was just a rant I added in my email, that if they would just look into chemistry rather than proliferating that it's all in his head, it would have saved the untold misery of the past four years. Well, yes. So I asked them to please do take notice of anyone in similar circumstances that have abnormally low creatinine, which is a very important energy marker for the methylation system in the body, which if that doesn't work is a really big problem. That was the end of my email. So even right back in 2017, when Elliot first started feeling exhausted all the time, there was actually a test that showed things were very wonky with his energy production, even though the doctors had always said that all his tests were normal. So what do doctors use the creatinine test for then? Well, this is what the NHS website says about the creatinine test. It says, this is used to measure kidney function. 
It comes from the muscles and it's called creatinine. And creatinine is made when we use our muscles. It's a waste product that the kidneys try to get rid of. So the website shows that the normal level is between 60 and 110 micromoles per litre. However, as your kidney function deteriorates, your creatinine levels will rise. So basically, the creatinine test is a bog standard test that doctors only look at if it has a high reading, because that indicates that you have a really serious kidney issue. So if you've had any full blood panel test taken at any time by the doctor, they have probably taken your creatine levels. So if you can get hold of those tests, you can check them. Or if you have the NHS app, it's generally under the urea heading. So you want to know what Elliot's levels of creatine were. I can't see his original hospital test when he first became ill. A very important tip is if you ever go into hospital and have any tests done, don't leave the hospital without a copy of your test results because they won't get added to your NHS app or your doctor's files. You can only literally get hospital blood tests while you're in the hospital and get your results at that point. So I'll show you Elliot's creatine chart that's from his NHS app. The first tests that I can actually see were when Elliot was 17 and his level was 40. So this lab range says that normal is between 50 and 95 and Elliot's were 40. So depending on which range you're looking at, his levels are at least 20 to 33% lower than both of those ranges, which is a really big significant difference. So in 2017, you can see that Elliot's health was in just constant freefall into very severe MECFS. That's when his levels were 40. When I started working on Elliot's nutrition and giving him liver every day, it really did start to help his creatinine levels creep up slightly but then you can see that there's another big drop when he had a big crash in 2020. That's when he really crashed and we had to spoon feed him. And his levels then dropped back down to 40 again. And then you can see the big increase when he started to take creatine monohydrate in 2021. For the first time, his creatine levels actually went into the normal range. And that's really interesting because that's when he really starts to make the improvements that I read about in the email to the doctors. So it does really prove there is a correlation between his creatinine levels and energy levels. The last result that you can see was from April 2022. And that was when Elliot had another really big crash after having the thing that was supposed to protect him that makes the sound that I don't think I'm allowed to talk about on this platform. But anyway, that set his recovery back by at least a year. And that reaction to his creatine levels to the fizzy thing really does provide a huge clue to anyone suffering from long COVID because it really shows that the immune response by our body to any viral infection, whether it's a natural infection or a medically induced infection, is a huge drain on our body's resources. And that has a huge impact on the molecules that our cells use for energy. So the thing I can't get my head around is why haven't the people that specialise in MECFS even thought about using this as a diagnostic test because it shows up a really big problem that has a really easy to solve solution. I did notify the professor of this, but she had no interest in pursuing it. We don't know if Elliot has a genetic problem in trying to make creatine. We don't know how common this issue is within people in the MECFS community. But all I know is Elliot surely cannot be the only person like this. We're not in any way advising you or prescribing you that you should supplement with creatine to improve your MECFS symptoms. However, if your blood serum creatinine levels are below the range or in the bottom third of the test range given in your results, then please do talk to your own doctor or your medical provider about the potential of supplementing creatine. So what is creatine then? Creatine is by far the most well-studied and well-supported nutritional supplement for athletic performance. However, recently there have been studies showing how beneficial it can be for long COVID and also for MECFS. And I'll link the science articles in the description. So our bodies can make creatine and we can also get it from food and most of it is used in our muscles. However, it's also really important for our stomach 
and so many people with ME CFS have awful digestion and absorption issues which could also be linked to having low creatine levels because creatine provides the power to pump stomach acid and it also provides the power to absorb the nutrients from our food. But the biggest and most important consumer of energy in our body is our brain, which although it's only 2% of our body weight, it uses 20% of our energy. So it really won't surprise you to know that molecule that provides our brain with energy is creatine. It really is Elliot's magic potion. So when Elliot started taking creatine, it really was as though somebody had just switched the lights on in his brain. It was just amazing. But because he'd been suffering with awful stomach issues at that time, I was very cautious about starting him on any new supplements. So we started with just a really tiny amount, just one gram for a few days, and then increased that to two grams. And then after about a week, he was having three grams, but it's important to take it with plenty of water because it can be dehydrating. Now that didn't cause him any adverse effects. So we built up to two scoops because it comes in a powder with a little scoop. Two scoops was about six grams. And after about two weeks of being on the two scoops, he just suddenly started asking questions about how his friends were and what they were up to. It was just so amazing. So it was just a very slow and gentle increase in his energy. But for the first time in over four years, he'd actually started to improve. It was amazing. The main point to consider here is that it only takes one missing molecule to cause a huge problem in how your body produces energy. Generating energy in our body is a really complicated system that requires a lot of ingredients so we discovered what Elliot's missing link was, that it was creatine, but I know that that's not gonna be the same for everybody. It may not be the thing that helps you, but even if this video just helps one person, then our mission has been accomplished. So how can we work out what our individual missing molecule is? Well, the whole purpose of this channel is to help you find ways to work that out. And we're going to be going in real detail into standard blood tests that most of us probably already have, but if not, they're easy to get at home. And we're going to look at the ranges for optimal health. So even if your test results say you're normal, it doesn't necessarily mean you are. We've just got so much that we want to share with you. So please do subscribe to keep up with our new videos. And let me know in the comments if this video does help you. I really do help it does because doing this is well outside my comfort zone, but we just really do want to help you.